As we begin our new sermon series today, it's not the seed, it's the soil. I want you to join me for a quick word of prayer. Dear God, we pray even now that seeds would be planted into our lives. Perhaps it's a song, maybe it's a piece of litany, maybe it's the message. We know that every day, every moment that we have with you, maybe it is an opportunity for us to be receptive to what you would have for us. And so it is our hope that as seeds are planted, as seeds are thrown out in this space of worship, that it would take root in our lives. For this is our hope and this is our prayer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. It's not the seed, but maybe it's the soil. What kind of faith are you cultivating? What kind, of, what kind of home or work life are you trying to develop? When you, when you envision your life, what do you, what do you see? What if I told you that we are not at the mercy of chance? What if I told you that faith gives us the chance and the choice to decide where and how we grow and how we develop? What if I told you that we choose what we cultivate in our lives? There are sometimes act outcomes are not by accident. I mean, people don't accidentally draw closer to God. People don't accidentally graduate. They don't randomly answer a call from God. People don't accidentally have healthy relationships. Churches don't accidentally become accepting. We don't stumble on being compassionate or forgiving or justice-seeking, but we cultivate with intention because certain outcomes do not happen by accident. So it was with the sower in our text. He is, he is not out there by accident, but he's sowing with a purpose because there's something that he wants to cultivate in his life. But remember, during Jesus' time, there were no tractors, there were no seed spreaders. In fact, it was typical in Jesus' day for a sower to carry a leather pouch across their shoulders. Filled with seeds. It was the most effective way that they knew how, so they would just walk around on their fields. And they would sow things spiritually. Now, we, we have told our uh, facility staff that this is going to happen, so don't get nervous. <laughs> we already told them, they are prepared. I mean, but that's what they would do because there was no, there was no way that they would decide. So, so they would go out into an empty field and they would sow sparingly. Some seed would fall on fertile ground, but a lot of seed would fall on hard ground. But there was something about the sower was that he had a vision in his mind, so now he's working backwards. Why? Because he's out there with a purpose. So because he has a vision in his mind, he's working backwards of what he wants to receive in his life. And the seed would broadcast over all different kinds of soil. So let's begin by looking at this through the lens of the sower. Because every sower starts with the end goal in mind. They have a vision of what they want to reap or sow as the outcome. So they, they begin working backwards. And as the, as the sower throws out the seed, as the sower throws out the seed, he's making, he's making an assumption about the seed. He's making an assumption about what he believes what happens, but he's also making an assumption about the seeds that he has in his pouch and the seeds that he has in his hand. Because at this point, the sower is simply operating off of faith. He believes in the seed. And all of the seed's possibilities. Because with each of these seeds has potential. 
We don't know anything about the sower. We don't know anything about what the sower is planting, but we do know that he believes in the seeds, and the seed is given a chance because of what the sower believes it can do, and that is the power of belief. In fact, psychologists and sociologists have figured this out. Studies have shown, for better or worse, that people often operate at the level of what's expected of them. They operate at, at the level of what people already believe in them. And there is empirical research showing that people perform better in just about every area of their lives when people believe in them or have high expectations of them. The seeds have a fighting chance because of what the sower believes about them. The sower is not just planting and throwing seeds out with a lack of faith, but the sower is sowing and planting seeds because of what he believes is possible in the seed. And the sower's belief is not based on what it has produced. We don't know, we don't know what the sower is, is planting or what is in his mind, but, but this sower, his belief is not based on what it has already produced, but it is based on what the seed can do. Because the seed has not grown, the seed has not produced anything, the sower cannot make a profit off of the seed, but he is believing in what is possible and the potential in the seed. He's not believing based on results, he's believing on what the seed can do. Now, this is countercultural to what we believe because we are culture fixated on finished products. We want accomplished. We believe in things that are proven. Show us your resume. What have you done? What have you accomplished? Has it been tested? Has it been tried? But when I plant, I'm not planting just based on what I can see, but I'm planting on based on what I believe can happen in this environment. But that is just how God often operates in our lives. God works with seeds. God has a habit of answering with seeds. God, God will call people that were far from finished products. I mean, most had minimal experience at what they were called to do. In fact, if most of the people in the Bible showed up to a job interview with all of the responsibilities that they were called to do and showed the employer their resume, they would make it past the first round. But that is not how God operates. That is not how God calls people. I mean, God would say, say this and the person had no experience God would say build this and the person had no experience lead this and the person had never led a thing follow me they had no experience because God would often call farmers to lead people in battle God will call musicians to be kings God will call fishermen to be disciples God would take a chance on the seeds and of the smallest possibilities and broadcast it to the world not not as proven commodities, not as accomplished people, but as seeds of possibility because there was something that God believed about the seed and there was something that God believes about us even in the unproven areas of our lives. What this suggests is that God often answers in seed. But that's not what we expect. Why? Because when we pray to God, we want harvest. We want fruit. <laughs> and God gives us a pouch of possibilities. Maybe it's because faith does not always afford us the luxury of finished people and proven outcomes, but we are invited to believe in the small possibilities in our lives. Maybe it's because faith is less about what's proven and more about believing in what's possible. 
because the sower is in good shape. He's in good shape. He's staring out into an empty field, but he's in good shape, not because there's a harvest in front of him, not because there's fruit in front of him, but because he has seeds in his pouch. He's in good shape, not because he has everything, but he has the seeds of small possibilities. And everything in life sometimes will tell us that unless you have proven commodities, unless you can, unless you can see it, that you are in bad shape. And sometimes it feels like that a certain area of our lives that we are staring out at empty fields and we have no idea what the outcome is going to be. And it seems like that nothing is possible. It seems like what we're praying for, it is not possible. But sometimes God has to remind us that remember you got the seeds. Remember you have these small possibilities. That I blessed you. So even, even if all you have is seeds, you're in good shape. Because the sower has an idea of what they want to receive. This dictates the kind of seed that they're planting. And it's important to not just plant any kind of seed. Because remember, he has, he has, he's working backwards and he has an idea in his mind What's supposed to grow in this area? So when he goes out to plant, he's not just planting any kind of seed, but he has to plant the right kind of seed. Maybe it's a a reminder that seeds are these small decisions and behaviors that we make today in light of what we want to grow tomorrow. In fact, Paul puts it like this. Paul tells the church in, in Galatia, Whatever one sows, he will also reap. Unfortunately, we always associate this idea with negative outcomes. It's always attributed to the person that does something wrong. And as a reminder, uh, we always tell them, well, you know you're going to reap what you sow. Uh, It's the person that we have a disagreement with or the person that's done us wrong. And we say in the back of our minds, well, they're just going to reap what they've sown, right? It's always associated with the person that's done something wrong. But I think if that's the only way that we look at reaping and sowing, I think that we miss something divine in the entire process because the way that nature works we reproduce or replicate what we are we can only replicate or reproduce what we are we simply we we multiply what we are so let's try this out you ready for this biology lesson you sure you know I have a theology degree but just last night I got my degree in biology so you sure you're ready So if I was to tell you that I've got pumpkin seeds, I've got cantaloupe seeds, and I've got cucumber seeds. Are you all familiar with cucumbers? You familiar with cantaloupes? You familiar with pumpkins? If I wanted to grow cucumbers, what kind of seeds would I have to plant? Oh, you all are a sharp bunch today. You're sharp, you're sharp, you're sharp. What if, okay, okay, okay. What if I wanted to grow cantaloupe? What kind, what kind of seeds do I need to plant? Oh, I'm telling you. Now, this is a hard one. If I was trying to go grow pumpkin, what kind of seeds would I plant? Pumpkin seeds. Because I reap what I sow. I can't plant cucumber seeds and expect cantaloupe. I can't plant cantaloupe seeds and expect pumpkins. Because I can only, I can only reap what I sow. Sometimes we, we want certain outcomes, we want certain outcomes, but we're not planting the right seeds. We wonder why the cucumber's growing, we wonder why the pumpkin's growing, it's because those are the kinds of seeds that we planted, because I can't reap what I haven't sown. I can't get the outcomes if I haven't sown the right kind of seed. I mean, if I want to reap joy and peace, I can't sow seeds of confusion and discord. 
If I want to grow in my faith, I have to plant the seeds or commit to those small behaviors or decisions that get me closer to what I imagine. If I want healthy relationships, I can't plant toxicity. I actually have to commit to the decisions and behaviors that lead to helpful and healthy connections. As a nation, if we want to reap unity together and oneness, but have historically and continually planted seeds of othering and marginalization and fear, and privilege and hate and indifference and apathy, it's no wonder why we continue to harvest and reap divisions. If we sow seeds of violence when we have sown or ignored or stigmatized mental health and the church is not immune, we have planted seeds of judgment and mistrust and wonder why people don't trust us because there are moments, not always, but we are simply reaping the values and the behaviors that were sown. Because sometimes, sooner or later, if I don't like what I'm receiving, it's time to change what I'm planning. If I don't like the certain outcomes in my life or my faith or my family, if I, if, if, if I am unsatisfied in those areas, if I've developed a distaste for cucumbers and cantaloupe, Maybe it's time to change the things that I'm sowing and planting because our present was at one time our future and now it's in the past, but what we planted in the past has now become what we receive and experience in the present and the seeds that I am planting today becomes the very thing that I reap in the empty fields tomorrow. So be careful what you plant because it's not just about planning anything but even as a as a as a community of faith as a as a general community as a follower of Jesus Christ the critical question is am i planting the right seeds so be careful of the small decisions that will impact what we reap tomorrow be careful how you treat people be careful what gets your time and attention be careful how you invest in your faith be careful how you use your gift be careful the kind of seeds that you plant because the seeds that you plant today will be the very thing that you harvest or reap tomorrow. So if you don't like cucumbers, if you don't like confusion, if you don't like division, we have the option of what we're cultivating today that will be what we reap tomorrow. But I know it's easier said than done because of some people look in their pouch. This can be quite disconcerting because the size of the seed really resembles the character of the harvest. I mean, the seed pairs in comparison to the outcome. In fact, let me prove it. Let me prove it. Can I prove it? You can't look at apple seeds and tell that that's going to grow into an apple. There's no way. You can't look at lemon seeds and conclude it's going to change into something sour and yellow. You can't do it. No one looks at the seeds of a watermelon and think that it's going to be this good. It don't work like that. In fact, if you're still not convinced, what kinds of seeds are these? Come on, I know you. What kinds of seeds are these? You have no clue, do you? I was hoping you wouldn't. Good. It worked. These are tomato seeds. Because the beginning looks nothing like the outcome. The beginning looks nothing like the outcome. Some of us are discrediting how the beginning looks because it doesn't look like the outcome. And we have some seeds and possibilities in our pouch. And we have no clue of what's in our hands. And discouragement begins to creep in. And we, because we've been expecting certain things from God in our faith and what we receive doesn't look like what we're expecting because God has answered in seeds that we can't decipher what the seeds will become. We wanted fruit. We wanted harvest, not the seeds. We wanted outcomes, not the beginnings. But you have to understand that everything is in the seed. 
A seed does not have a, a seed does not have to uh, add roots. You don't have to add leaves to it. You don't have to add branches. You don't have to give it something that, that it doesn't already have. It's in there. Everything that the seed already needs, it's in there. Maybe that's why God believes in the potential and the possibilities of the seed, not just based off of what God sees, but God knows what's inside the seed. And the hard part and the good news of faith is that God spends the rest of our lives trying to get what's inside of us on the outside. We don't have to become different people. We just have to be receptive of God doing the things that God wants to do in our lives, even though it begins with seeds. But even if it begins with seeds, that comes with some complications because if God answers and sees, sometimes we have to give it time to grow. In fact, let me make it real to you. Uh, our kids are at the age now where it seems like everything shrinks too fast. You been there before? Right? We buy shoes and a few months, they don't fit. I don't know if they're trying to game us just to get new things. We buy pants in a few weeks. They seem like they're com they are a completely different size. And it's not like they have well-paying jobs so that they can pitch in uh, on their clothes. Right? So what, so what do we do? We have to keep buying more as they grow. So we are at this point, they're growing so fast, we're at the point that if we buy something, if we buy something and it's too big, what do you think we do? We keep it. If we buy something and it's too big, we keep it because sooner or later we know we're going to do what? They're going to grow into it. Sooner or later we know that they're going to grow into it because there are some things, hear me, we know that they're going to grow into it. We don't discount it because it seems to be an uncomfortable phase because we know that sooner or later they're going to grow into what they have already received. And there are some things that God has, gives us in our lives. There are certain blessings, there are certain experiences that sometimes we just have to grow into. It doesn't always feel good when God answers and sees, but can we be patient enough? Can we be trustful enough to know that even when God answers in small possibilities, that there are just some things that we have to grow into? And I want to end here. Choir, you can get ready to sing. Um, we're going to end here because I know, I know this, seems, this seems easy to preach because when the sower goes out, he's somewhat challenged because when the sower goes out and he's, and he's sowing and he's sowing the seeds, he's challenged because when he puts the seed in and covers it up and walk away, he's got to believe that something's going to happen. The scripture says that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it will remain a single grain. But unless it dies, unless it dies, it will bear much fruit. So there's got to be something in the ground for it to happen. But putting something in the ground can be challenging to our faith because sometimes it's easier to hoard possibilities than it is to let them go. Because in order for the seed to grow, I've got I've to let it go. I've got to cover it with dirt and I've got to walk away. But planting seems identical to burying. If I bury something in the ground with no hopes of it ever coming back again, what do I do? I put it in the ground, I cover it with dirt, and I walk away. And sometimes we're confusing the emotions of something being planted in our lives and something being buried. Sometimes God answers and seeds, and sometimes it feels as though our hopes are being buried, our dreams are being buried, our joy is being buried, our peace is being buried, our future is being buried. But maybe it's a reminder that there are some things in our lives that feel like that they're being buried, but maybe it's just God planting them. It felt like we put some things in dark places and covered them up and walk away, but little did we know that if we trust God, 
there are some possibilities down deep. But there are some possibilities that what goes down must come back up again. So let that be your hope today. That maybe the very thing that you think has been buried has just been a seed that God wanted to plant in your life. Won't you pray with me? God, everything says that it's not possible. Everything says that love and forgiveness and inclusion and so many difficult things that we come across in our lives. It feels like we're just looking at empty fields. But there's some, some hope in those small possibilities. There's hope in those small decisions and small behaviors that we commit to every day of our lives. We may not always see them, but they're taking root. We may not always feel them, but there's something going down under the surface that we may not always be able to see, but we feel. So give us the patience to trust that you are working and the hope that sooner or later, what we have planted, the seeds that we have planted, the seeds we have planted in our families, the seeds that we've planted in our children, the seeds that we have planted in this community, though we may not always see it. And we know that there is a harvest and fruit for the outcome. For this is our hope and prayer in Christ's name we pray. Amen.